After last year's complete overhaul of macOS design and feature set, making a big progression forward isn't necessary right now. Monterey is Apple's incremental upgrade for the individual who's content with last year's OS. Call it an S year upgrade, but the changes made are still substantial enough to make it worth your time, as long as you fit into a certain group of Apple users. I've been using the latest version for the past month, and this is the macOS Monterey review. Monterey isn't a large overhaul in the design department. That was Big Sur's job from last year. This year, there are eight new features that I think are worth going over. There are many other smaller improvements that I'll also go over towards the end of the video. The first of those features is FaceTime improvements that add support for SharePlay, live portrait video, and an option to share a link for all the users outside of the Apple ecosystem. Personally, I was most excited about SharePlay, but was quickly let down by its capabilities. In theory, you're supposed to be able to share music or movies with the person that you're on FaceTime with. However, all your entertainment is only able to go through Apple's own software, like Apple Music or Apple TV+, both of which I don't use. Next year, I'm hoping that there's more support for third-party applications like Spotify and Netflix. Those would be nice to have. Portrait mode video works about as well as you'd expect. Not that great, but it passes all right if you need it. It's a very tough thing to process where to mask out a person for the blur on a video, so I'm sure that improvements will take place when the webcam has more detail than my 720p one. AirPlay to Mac was another feature I was sadly let down by as an Android user with a Mac. Unlike when I'm using Windows Cast, I'm not able to cast content from my Android 10 device to the Mac. This feature again has limitations for anyone not using other Apple devices, but it is still a great feature for people that want their phone's content, like photos or videos, to mirror on the Mac. A feature I use a lot for school is the live text, which allows you to copy or translate the text from a photo. This is mainly helpful when I'd prefer to not type out an entire page of text into a document and can instead paste it in. There are minor errors every now and then, typically when there's more text, but even with the minor issues, I still enjoy using it. Just like I enjoy using dictation, a lot more than I thought I would. The limit of 60 seconds has been removed this year, so I enjoy speaking to type and punctuating. It's not as advanced as the new Google Pixel dictation that predicts the punctuation surprisingly well. However, the accuracy is still some of the best out there. Unfortunately, I'm not able to test universal control without another Apple device, but I think that it's still worth a mention. If you drag your cursor on a Mac to an iPad, for example, the mouse works seamlessly without having to disconnect and reconnect the mouse every time. Even cooler, in my opinion, is the ability to drag and drop items from one device to another. If support was added for other computers that use Windows, universal control would be even better. Focus modes that were introduced to iOS 15 now make their debut on macOS and have the same level of control. I find it especially helpful to set it for a few hours at the end of the day while I'm getting work done without distractions. Between all Apple devices, the focus mode is on if one device selects it, instead of having to turn it on for your iPhone, iPad, and Mac. And the last big update was another new addition, the Shortcuts app. This used to be a third-party app, but is now under a first-party app branded with Apple. Here you can do things that are very similar to if this, then that. For example, when a Bluetooth audio device is connected, then the volume can be set to 20% automatically. Or if you use an iPhone and arrive at your house, lights can automatically be activated. There's also a lot more that you can set up, but I personally haven't found a lot of use out of it because I don't have any specific workflows that can utilize these shortcuts. Even though I don't personally use the app, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't, and it doesn't mean that it shouldn't be considered, but it does make more sense for iPhone users in my opinion. Now that this is all out of the way, let's move on to the small improvements that deserve a mention. New Hello screensavers and wallpapers are here. Safari tab groups are just like grouping tabs on Chrome. The sensor in use indicator is a nice privacy touch to know if your mic or camera is being used. Notification images are ever so slightly bigger than before. Find My supports air tags and has a new widget. The computer can go into low power mode with both battery and AC power. And finally, Maps now displays road markings and renderings of trees in large cities. My only minor complaint is when I'm watching YouTube or in any video in full screen and I go to exit with the mouse, I keep accidentally clicking the quick notes shortcut that's been added. That's a pretty small complaint though. 
So have you noticed any other patterns when I was talking about the new features? Well, most of them work better if an iPhone is in the ecosystem. As an Android user, that's a little annoying because there are a lot of features that are capable of working without an iPhone, but I can't use it. For as long as Apple is continuing to make iPhones, they will always work best with Macs. However, this Monterey update going into 2022 makes the Mac the best version of itself yet. If you enjoyed this or found it helpful or useful in any way, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to more tech content like this every week. Also, let me know what you think about Monterey in the comments below. Happy holidays, stay safe wherever you are, and I'll see you next time on Tech Device News.